you'll, uh, if there's questions, people raising their hand, you'll let me know. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand at any time. Um, this is as much conversation as anything else. Um, so feel free to chime in with questions. For those of you who are tuning in on the stream, uh, please raise your hand and Bo will, um, is doing our tech support, doing a great job of it. Um, we'll grab your questions and let me know. All right. Um, first off, uh, good to see you all. Sorry that it's been a couple months since our last members meeting. We are working on getting back on track. Um, we had some schedule changes with board meetings um, and some people out with illness. Um, so we're hoping, planning on uh, March, the second week of March, to be our next members meeting. So that's coming up in like two weeks. So there won't be a huge number of updates, but we did want to get some um, information out to you guys since we missed the January um, members meeting last month. So a couple of updates, we'll go through our financials, kind of membership summary, some updates around Hacker Dojo, and then um, open it up for some discussion and questions uh, that you may have. Um, also, right, did battery. You want to grab a new battery from now, I'll just project. project. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it should be up at the front desk. Yeah. All right, I guess I'm just going to project for the moment. Um, first off, apologies. These numbers are a little bit outdated. Um, our treasurer has been out um, very, very busy with life. So he hasn't gotten updated numbers um, up yet. So I'll talk briefly about where we are currently financially. Uh, but these are the numbers at the end of uh, December and into January. Um, we'll have updated ones as soon as uh, Jeff is able to get those um, out. Um, certainly by the next board member and members meeting, we'll have an up-to-date um, accounting. So at the end of the year, um, we ran into a lot of financial challenges with end of the year payments and um, end of the year bills and down to a very, very low bank, bank um, balance. Um, at the end of the year, prior to rent being paid, January 1st, we were down about $5,000, um, which obviously is a little bit of a challenge with... Um, so, um, obviously, challenging with rent being due to first, um, it's about $16,000 a month for rent for this space um, in total. So, you know, we were well behind that. We knew that that was going to be a little bit of a challenge um, in the month of January. We had a couple of large invoices that we knew wouldn't be arriving until um, late in January. Our landlord fortunate, we communicated with them, let them know the situation, um, and they've been very understanding as we've gone through kind of this um, end of the year and beginning of 2024 cash crunch. Um, so this was a very, very challenging month. Um, and um, in December, through the end of December, because of those end of the year bills, some other contractor payments we had, we actually had a net negative of about $22,000. About fourteen or 15000 of that was one-time expenses that happened each year. Uh, we also had a couple of major donations that typically arrive in December and January um, from board members' dues, things like that. Due to a number of different issues, we lost a couple of, um, lost one board member. Um, and so those donations did not come in as expected. So it ended up being a very, very challenging month. Those challenges have continued to present. Um, currently, uh, we are much closer to being up to date with our current bills. So the invoices have, uh, that we had outstanding have come in and helped us get back on track with that. But we are still at a deficit point right now um, that we are working through. Um, it's one of the reasons why Jeff is trying to get the accurate numbers. Um, it's about between five and ten thousand dollars. We hope that we can close that by the end of end of March. Um, so that's. And the high level updates for um, our current financial situation. Um, because we've been talking with the landlord along the way, they've been very, very generous and helped us um, delay um, paying the rent until um, we have that cash on hand to both make sure that we can pay our contractors, Tiana um, employees, pay our electricity bill, all of those things like that. Um, so they've been very, very kind in helping us through that, understanding that we're working on um, getting back to a net positive month to month. Um, when I started, we were running about an eight to ten thousand net negative each month. We've reduced that down to about four thousand or so net negative each month. 
but that's still, you know, we still have uh, ground that we need to cover. We are currently in kind of a cycle each, um, every other month we get a major payment from Summit, allows us to come current. Um, but in the meantime, we're still paying our contractors who are making that happen. Um, so it is a little bit of a wave that we're riding right now. It's one of the reasons why we've been really emphasizing building, rebuilding um, our cash balances through our fundraising efforts so that we aren't dealing with this kind of cyclical each month, um, struggling to make sure that we're balancing when things get paid, when invoices are coming in, um, and things like that. So financially, pretty challenging right now, but we do have a pretty clear path forward that um, we are working towards, um, and we've been able to significantly reduce our month-to-month -month, um, burn rate um, through the Summit program. Um, the annual memberships, we got a date, decent bump from that in January and February. Those always help us. Um, and um, just ongoing um, additional income. We've been working on diversifying our revenue streams so we're not just membership. We're also doing more events, um, education, um, you know, offsite, things like that have helped us close this gap pretty significantly. I believe January was a net positive by a little bit. Um, but February was another net negative just on how that summit payment comes through. Any questions on this? Thanks for my line. Yeah. All right, so membership has been relatively flat for the last few months, um, but we are seeing a little bit of a upward trend um, over between January and February. This, um, both of these are accurate as of this morning. Um, so these are pretty up-to-date numbers. Um, so our active contracts, memberships, um, have been flat since about August. We did see a little bit of a bump in January, and we are hoping that we'll pick up a couple more memberships by the end of, um, end of this month, and that will continue kind of this um, small upward trend. Um, we did this past month um, fill up the remaining hive desks and our dedicated desks. So even though the um, even though the membership numbers are relatively flat, slightly down for the month of February, uh, the actual revenue has um, gone up because those you know revenue from the hive and dedicated desks is a little bit higher. We also had a few more paid um, reservations and things like that um, over the last two months. That's helped boost this as well. Um, the annual memberships, as I mentioned, always help us. It's you know essentially cash in hand um, that allows us to be a lot more, uh, do a lot more financial planning because we know that revenue is going to be there um, for the year. So if you're considering a, um, a yearly membership, it is a pretty significant discount, about 15 or 20 percent. Um, so if you wanted to go to an annual membership to upgrade yours, that is something that does help us. Um, particularly right now where we are working on closing this financial gap that we have right now helps us a ton. Um, we've had our first uh, first couple of memberships coming in from Nextdoor and Craigslist, some of the um, additional advertising that we've done, getting word out about HackerDojo out to the community a little bit more. Uh, so that is bringing in some additional um, eyes and feet through the doors. We've had a pretty high conversion rate for memberships in February. Um, so for people who are coming in for tours. So please invite your friends, you know, anyone else that you know that you're working with that might want a space, bring them in for a tour, show them around the space, um, and encourage them to join and support Hacker Dojo if they're able to. Um, revenue has generally, from membership has generally been flat um, since the beginning of summer. We did see the increase in January and February. Um, again, for February, a lot of this bump has been from annual memberships that uh, kicked in typically two years ago. We had a influx of those. Um, so that's helped us close our current financial gap by a pretty decent amount. Um, but we're still lagging behind where we'd like to be. Um, definitely want to get back up into our May, uh, May and June level of revenue. Um, but a lot of that just takes additional people coming through the doors, additional outreach, inviting friends, um, inviting coworkers other people from the community. Bring them out here whenever we have events. Talk with people, invite them to join and support Hacker Dojo. A lot of people don't know that Hacker Dojo, when they come here, that's a 501c3, that we're a nonprofit organization. Um, so help spread that message, let people know who we are and what we're about. 
Any questions here? All right, so kind of the major financial points from January and February, um, as I mentioned before, we delayed, uh, we had some delayed invoice payments that caused us uh, some pretty big challenges with cash flow in January. Um, that has now finally come in. Um, we've been delaying those rent payments in conjunction with that, um, with the landlords, um, or communicating with the landlords. They're obviously not thrilled about it, but they've also been understanding um, that we're working on getting caught up. Uh, we're looking at a number of different options to kind of bridge our current month-to-month -month cash burn. Uh, youth programs, pay payments, sponsorship opportunities are the three primary areas that we're working on. Uh, youth programs are primarily targeting summer camps. Um, it's a huge revenue opportunity. But we also want to be mindful of the impact of having kids potentially in this space during the day when people are working, holding meetings, things like that. So we're looking at a number of off-site options for those. So we can still hold those programs, um, and not disrupt you know, anyone who's working here or needs access to the laser lab or the electronics lab during the day. So we want to be clear that we are being very, very mindful of trying to balance member needs um, with our cash flow realities of we're trying to you know, manage the cash flow for an organization. Um, and we also don't want to increase membership rates. Um, so there's a balance that we're always trying to strike in that. But I always want to prioritize your member experience here at Hacker Dojo and the community's experience here. Um, so at any point, if you have questions or comments or concerns, you know, anything like that, I always welcome those. So please do feel free to reach out. If there's something, you know, kids are being extra loud, we have a youth robotics team that uses our space. If that's being disruptive and bringing up problems, let us know. Because if we, you know, if we don't address that, don't know about it, uh, those problems can just fester and we want to be on top of that as much as we can. Um, we did see the increases uh, shown in, pre um, in the previous slide, uh, increase in memberships and events um, driving that revenue increase in January. Um, we're still, like I said, lagging behind our monthly average expenses by about $4,000, $5,000 a month. Um, but that's been down significantly from where we started at. Um, but we are reaching a pretty critical point where unless we're getting more revenue coming in, um, particularly from like youth camp registrations, pre-registrations for summer, um, we're going to be running into more and more challenges with cash flow. Um, we are due a payment from Summit this month, so that will alleviate some of our concerns for, through March. Um, but April will definitely be another challenging month um, unless you have those pre registrations or other revenue coming in. Any other questions? Or any questions? Yes. Um, there was a bridge loan mentioned in the end of last year. What happened to it? Uh, the bridge loan that we had, um, we fully paid back. So if we get to a point where we need that again, um, that option is on the table, um, but that loan has been fully paid back. We'd like, again, we'd like to avoid that, um, but bridge loans, you know, probably right now until we re rebuild our cash reserves, um, are something that it is something that we look at um, pretty actively on a regular basis. At that point, it made financial sense for us. Um, we aren't quite at that point right now. Um, and some of the people who extended that don't have the same financial resources now to, um, to make that possible. So it's a little bit more challenging, um, but something that we are looking at pretty regularly. Any questions from online? Again, if you're online, feel free to chime in and um, message in the chat there. So some of the good news in uh, January, we did receive a couple of major donations, um, a $5,000 private donation. We received a grant from the Los Altos Mountain View Community Foundation uh, that was for operational expenses. One of the great things about that type of grant is it allows us to spend it on whatever we need to. It's keeping the lights on, keeping the space available. Um, whereas most grants tend to be programmatic, they pay you to support a program. There are a number of organizations that do operational grants um, for, for community organizations like ours. Um, so thank you to Los Angeles Mountain View Community Foundation for that. Um, and then also the youth robotics team uh, ran a fundraiser and donated $2,000 this past month to support Hacker Dojo. So again, thank you for Shrevox um, 6822. Really appreciate you guys' support. Uh, we also had a couple of different private events that were booked and took place this last month. 
We know that one of them was a little bit loud, and we apologize for any disruption that that caused. Um, T-Mobile had a great time here, uh, as all of you who are here can probably attest to. Uh, we will try to ask them to keep it down in, in the future if they come back. Um, but those events, um, the private events, do help us um, month to month close some of the um, budget shortfalls that we have. Uh, so we try to be, again, conscious of the member experience here uh, while balancing that with the financial needs of first uh, diversifying our revenue and bringing in additional payments and um, potential partners. So really appreciate the ability to reach out and say, hey, they're being loud. Uh, we're able to reach out to the organizers and just ask them to keep it down a little bit. So again, feel free to reach out to us when you have problems, friction points, things that you're struggling with. Um, we do take those seriously and try to be on top of that as much as we can. Uh, some of the challenges, as I mentioned before, the end of the year um, payments that we had um, really exhausted the cash reserves that we have remaining. Uh, we're running currently a little bit of a deficit, um, managing that with our landlord, uh, as that's our single largest monthly expense. We also haven't had a huge amount of traction on our fundraising campaign. Um, between the two campaigns we're running, it's been about four thousand dollars to date. Um, so it's you know certainly helps. Um, but this is something that individually as members you can have an impact. Um, and this impact can be everything from sharing it and promoting, hey, you know, support this organization that I'm a part of, that's a community resource. Um, that's a really measurable way that you can provide visibility and connect with other donors. And for that also, you know, every dollar that's donated helps us. It's one more donor that we can talk to some of our larger potential donors and say, this is a person that believes in our community, that we're connected with. You know, they didn't have a lot of financial resources available, but you know, they gave $5, $10, $20 because they believe in our organization. That's another like, really, really direct impact that you can have. So a lot of the conversations with major donors, a lot of that does revolve around like, how large is your community? How many people are we actually impacting with uh, how many engaged people are we actively impacting with a potential donation. Um, so showing even small dollar donation traction really helps us make that case to uh, potential larger donors that this is an organization worth supporting. Um, I will have a QR code at the very end if you want to uh, check out the campaign. Um, so stay tuned for that. Any questions on this? All right, we're gonna keep this super short today, probably. Um, so some additional updates, we had a really successful volunteer day um, earlier this month. For those of you who use the classroom regularly, uh, new paint um, coat in there, made a lot of progress around the space. Um, really just bring it uh, a slightly more modern, cleaner look. Um, and so we really appreciate everyone who came out and supported that. We are um, engaged in some ongoing efforts, improving the electronics lab, laser lab, things like that. Um, and we're going to be launching a lot of volunteer driven initiatives over the next month. We had a really great meeting um, last Friday with some core um, members that we reached out to to get some, so that's some direct feedback and came out of that with some really, really good ideas that we're going to be sharing with the community um, as we get some actionable items uh, from those. Um, also, again, want to thank Bo for uh, doing um, doing the tech for today. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can be involved in the dojo, um, and all of them help us. So um, if you have a couple of hours each week and want to give tours and support the front desk and help out Tiana scheduling events um, or anything like that, please reach out to us, let us know. And um, we're going to be building an um, ongoing task list that volunteers can tackle. Everything from hosting events to you know, just putting a paperboard in the electronics lab um, and everything in between. Uh, last time we met, we talked about um, a site across the road that we're working on with Google. And the unfortunate news on that is their development team let them know that that site's going to be um, redeveloped in about a year and a half. So that site is off the table. They are working on putting together a new list of sites for us to review. Um, but that was really disappointing news for um, everyone involved. Um, the team that we're working with, they didn't know about it either. So they felt pretty bad that we spent the time that we did on that site. Um, but they're working on another one, very, very similar in the immediate area. So hopefully next month we'll have some updates on that. Does that mention about the annual discount? 
Oh, yes. Um, and we put out the annual discount is 25%. Um, so if you sign up for an annual membership, it is a really significant savings. Um, other updates, uh, Summit. It be oh. reduced in March. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. At the end of, end of March, it's going to be reduced down to, I think, 17% discount. Um, so if you're thinking about an annual membership, definitely encourage um, getting on that sooner rather than later. Um, we also have the summit program that is resuming for round three. Um, so that's the youth program that we've been teaching at local high schools, doing entrepreneurship, robotics, and programming. So far, we've had really good reviews pretty much across the board. So we really appreciate our instructors for making that happen. Um, in total, that program is bringing in about 40, 40 to forty-five thousand dollars for Hacker Dojo um, over about a nine-month period. So that's been a big part of us closing that eight to ten thousand dollar operational gap. Pretty much cut that in half. Um, so again, really appreciate the teachers that are making that happen. Um, they're teaching. Well, have wrapped up for today, but teaching up in San Francisco right now. Um, so thank you to um, everyone involved in that program. Um, also, want to announce we have new tea in the tea drawer for those of you who are tea drinkers. We heard you. No more Lipton. <laughs> Um, we stocked it with stash. If you like stash, if you like this tea, let us know. Um, we're always trying to improve the experience here. And if you hate something like Lipton tea, I didn't know that Lipton tea was hated so much. Uh, <laughs> so I apologize for that. We won't get it again. We want to make sure that you guys have the proper caffeinated experience or decaffeinated experience here. Um, so if you have specific requests for tea or different coffees, things like that, please let us know. We're not going to get a super high-end espresso machine in the next couple of months, um, but we can put it on the wish list. Um, so we want your experience here to be the best that it can be. Um, so we're always working on making that a little bit better. Um, also, Lightning Talks, which have been on a hiatus um, for the last two months, we are going to be bringing those back. We've been working on revamping the format for that, making it a little bit more engaging. We got a lot of feedback that it was kind of getting a little bit repetitive and stale. Um, so we're going to be adding in, um, it's reducing the frequency to once a month. So people will have a chance to like really prepare for their lightning talks. Um, we're going to do a theme each month and we're going to add in a keynote, about 15 minute speaker at the beginning that's talking about whichever theme that it may be. Um, those themes after uh, March are going to be community, voted on by the community. So we'll have four or five different options and the community will get to vote on which one they want for the next time. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll have the details on that, um, on that over about the next week or so. Um, and then we're always uh, seeking event hosts and volunteers. If you want to be the host for the Lightning Talks um, or want to host another event, please reach out to us and let us know. Uh, that's one of the big ways that Hacker Dojo is really community driven. Almost all the events that we host are run by volunteers. Uh, there's only a couple that Hacker Dojo like, really you know, Hacker Dojo staff are heavily involved in. Um, so we really appreciate all the volunteers that have stepped up our Python nights, Rust meetups, Ultimate Game nights. We really appreciate all the ways that the community, is, the community has stepped up and taken leadership on those events. So if there's something you want to see, even if you don't want to lead it, if there's something you want to see, let us know and we'll put out the call for a volunteer um, for that. Um, so uh, any questions on this? Anything off the top of your head that you really want us to improve, that's a major pain point. You can email me later if you think of something. <laughs> see if this happens. Um, so some of the current challenges, as I mentioned before, membership has been relatively flat. Uh, we did un um, eliminate the unlimited access. We're capping access, free access, uh, sorry, eliminating the free unlimited access. Uh, we had to have a guest policy from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., as many days as you want during the month. Um, and we found a lot of people were taking advantage of that in a way that was not beneficial to the community. Uh, so we are capping at five days per month. Uh, so we still do have some free access, but we are encouraging people who need free access. If you have specific reasons, whether you're you know, searching for a new job, things like that, reach out to us. Um, let us know. We can have a discussion about what we can do to help. 
Um, but in general, that free access was something that was um, being taken advantage of, um, not in the spirit of excellence to fellow community members. Um, the other thing we've really identified that we want to move forward on as soon as we can is the community manager role. Um, this is someone who would be a more continuous presence um, at the front desk. Right now we're relying on volunteers, a lot of different people. Um, Offstand times when Tiana or myself can't be here. Um, and someone who is you know, really the um, person facilitating events um, on a daily basis. Um, we can only be here so many hours in a day and a lot of our events in the evening. So we do need a little bit more coverage in that area. Um, so that is kind of our next priority hiring wise. Um, and then as I mentioned before, the cash flow has been the biggest challenge over the last couple of months. Um, we are looking forward to the summer registration revenue is trying to come in um, and that will help alleviate, hopefully help alleviate um, a lot of cash flow issues. Um, and then as I mentioned before, we did um, lose one member from our board this year and we are also looking to expand that board to seven. Um, I do want to call our two new board members, um, Marco and Jorge joined the board this past year. Uh, Marco this year, Jorge last year. Um, so welcome both of them to the board. We are looking for um, a few more people on the board. So if you know someone who has board experience, nonprofit experience, um, in particular, we're looking for additional help at the treasurer and secretary positions, please do reach out and let us know. Um, this is a way that you can really help shape the future of Hacker Dojo um, and help us you know, have a, you know, the board right now, lots falling on a small number of people. So having a few more people on the board will make that run a little bit more smoothly. Um, really appreciate um, all the board members and the ways that they've stepped up in different ways throughout the year. Um, but we want to bring in some additional help for them um, and some additional new voices and new ideas uh, to the mix. So um, if that's something you're interested in um, or have other people that you're connected with that might be interested in, please do reach out and let us know. Um, we do have a process for, um, for looking at new board members um, and we are prioritizing prior board experience at this point, um, but it's something that we are looking for uh, for 2024. Any questions on this? All right, that's all that I've got. This is a QR um, code. Should I make that two bit? Um, for our current fundraising campaign. So if you um, snapshot this, um, that'll take you to the page. You can share it directly from there. Very, very easy to do. Um, you can share it to your social media, things like that. If you're in a position where you can donate to help support Hacker Dojo, we absolutely appreciate it. Um, but this is a great way that you can share both visibility about us as an organization and the fundraiser um, in particular that we're running for this year. Um, so please do take a shot of this, share it when you're able to, um, and that's all that I've got for today. So any questions or comments? Open it up for those in the audience and those online. All right, give you another minute, two minutes. And also thank you all for being members at Hacker Dojo. You guys are the community that brought me over here and really, really appreciate just how each person interacts with everyone else. Um, so keep doing what you're doing. We really appreciate how much you guys talk, share, play ping pong with each other, play poker, um, and exist in this great community. So thank you very much. Um, I think we will wrap it up. Oh, um, yeah, quick note from Emily. The uh, secretary and treasurer positions do not need to be board members. Um, so if you have you know, financial experience within nonprofits, but you don't want to necessarily see, sit on the board. Um, the treasurer position might be a great fit. The secretary is primarily responsible for organizing um, board meetings, communications, things like that. Again, it doesn't have to be a board position. Um, so if that's something that you, know, you aren't interested in a board seat, but might be interested in supporting as a volunteer, 
through the Secretary of Treasury position, um, please feel free to reach out uh, as well. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's mentioned before we are recording this, so this will be available if you want to review it um, at a later date. Um, we are going to be, as I mentioned before, going back to our prior schedule of doing it probably second Tuesdays, um, and hopefully twice during the day, um, starting this coming month. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll have the date for that published out fairly soon. Thank you very much, and have a great day.